Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Thank you so much for being here. That's the first thing I want to say today. I really am so happy to welcome you here, to know that you're out there in 150 countries around the world, just sitting in, on your sofa at your kitchen table, or maybe out in the garden, or perhaps you're walking, you know, watching us um, and just hopefully feeling part of a bigger community than yourself. You know, this is what we're here for, to connect women from all over the world who are over 60, you know, just trying to live their life in a new and different way, you know, and to feel that they're not on the journey alone. You know, it, it can be tough. I mean, you've got, you know, family is, or they're, you know, your kids are doing their own thing. They're, they're starting their own lives. Your um, careers have perhaps come to an end. You're now on your own. You may have retired. You may have had a divorce or lost your husband. You know, there's so many, or partner, there's so many things that, that can be going on in your life at this age. So thank you for choosing to be here <laughs> for part of that at least. And um, I really do appreciate it. So tell a friend, you know, if you know a woman over 60 or in their 50s who, you know, is, is just missing that company of other women, just have her join 60andme.com. Uh, you can go to 60andme.com forward slash start. And that tells you all the stuff that we do, all the different channels. And, um, you know, maybe you don't even know about that. So hope that you find it useful. Now, I've got my tea this morning. I'm drinking, um, where's the, anyway, the tea bag is gone, but it's Rui Bass. Now, Rui Bass, interesting tea. Um, it's a dark tea. It's actually usually um, served with milk. I, I don't like it with milk, but um, it's, it's one of these teas. It doesn't have any caffeine. I've got hair in my face so. um, it doesn't have any caffeine and it's um, it's very good for you for various things like asthma eczema and also for insomnia now I you know you can go on forever with these teas because every single one seems to have a whole um, collage of uh, of possible benefits <laughs> but anyway rubas is a good tea for you if you want a nice uh, full body tea but with no caffeine so that's one thing. Now, the reason that I chose Rubas today is what I wanted to talk to you about was sleeping. Now, one of our bloggers, Joan Moran, wrote this article on ways to wake up feeling positive in the morning. Now, this isn't really a, a discussion about, you know, getting to sleep necessarily or, or staying asleep. It's what you do when you wake up. Now, I mean, we, you know, you may have had a bad dream. You know, you, you may have just been tossing and turning all night. You may have an achy body. You may, you may have been out walking or just, just feeling a little bit um, under the weather. You could have had um, this desire to just sort of get back in the under the covers and go back to sleep for a few hours. <laughs> and sometimes that's all you need to do. But if you're feeling that way and you really feel like you need a boost of energy and you just need a fresh start, positive start to the day, here's some ideas from her. Now, she's got 20. I don't know whether we'll get through 20, but we'll we'll move along and um, they're all kind of uh, um, in a way ones that you probably thought of but maybe not because Joan um, has a very interesting perspective on well-being and takes it to a level that I think is is useful so here's some ways to wake up positive first thing don't move a muscle stay there lie still <laughs> don't move <laughs> and just let your body catch up with your mind just just relax for just a minute don't move. And I think that just in doing that, you can continue to, to indulge in the relaxation and then go into the day. You can just have that pause where you appreciate and you embrace the stillness. Second thing, try to remember your dreams. Now, there are certain cultures in the world where the telling of the dream is more important than the dream itself, is how you interpret it. So I think that's kind of nice to, if you've just woken up from a dream, just lie there for a few minutes and try to remember the details. And in your mind, try to remember, well, remember the words that you use to describe the dream. And if there's any words that come out, or do you maybe just feel a bit like crying? I mean, are there, there are things from your dream that, that stay with you? Pay attention to those. Joan recommends you really watch your dreams. Train your mind to remember your dreams. Next thing is to align your energy. You know, keep your spine straight and let that energy move through your body. Whether you meditate or not, just let, just let your body be straight. And feel your breath moving from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. And just do a little body scan and go right to the top so that you just get that feeling of, um, you know, total uh, union between top and bottom. <laughs> Align your body. 
Another thing is to meditate and to breathe as part of the meditation practice. Now, I, um, I've been meditating now for, gosh, 40 years. I mean, not, you know, not like religiously every minute, but I've tried really hard in my life to keep up with that. And it's, it's helped me a lot. You know, if your thoughts are running around, you've got this monkey mind going on. Meditation is really helpful for just focusing. It doesn't really matter what kind of meditation you do. If you just sit and breathe, you know, breathe in and breathe out. And then as you have thoughts, just say, I'm having thoughts, let it go and just move on back to the breath. Just that process of moving on and back to the breath is really good for focus. It's a super, super good way to um, then prepare yourself for the day. And that, believe me, that monkey mind will keep coming back. Um, and if you don't know what monkey mind is, uh, we did another video on that. You can go check it out. It's just, just chatter. So don't attach. When you wake up, don't attach yourself to the thoughts, if you can. I mean, there may be something really on your mind that you just can't let go. And that's okay. I mean, if it's something personal that's happening in your life, sometimes you just can't let go and you, and you do stay with that thought all day for days. It just, you know, grief and, and loss and sadness does stay, stay with you. But try if you can to not attach yourself. Because I think that that's what takes you down a little rabbit hole of depression and you don't want to go there. Another thing is to consider what makes you happy. And this is um, one of Joan's suggestions. And, you know, we, we've written about this too, this gratitude attitude. <laughs> you know, you just for a minute, if you've got something on your mind that's kind of making you feel worried, then just try to think of three things that make you happy. Not that one thing that's making you sad or even three things that's making you sad. But just think of things that make you happy and say them out loud. Smile. Happy thoughts will follow a smile. It's true. Just go to the mirror and smile at yourself. I know sometimes it's not easy and little tears are coming down the cheeks at the same time, but, you know, just, just try to smile. The, the inner gratitude, that inner clock will, you know, will begin to nudge you. Just name five things that you're grateful for and then, and then smile. It's really good. Another thing that uh, Joan mentions is to give yourself a break. You know, we're so hard on ourselves. We really work so hard to, um, you know, to keep up with everybody, to pr prepare and, you know, please everyone. But, you know, we're better than we think. And I think just giving yourself a break, be, just lightening up a little, being care more carefree is really important. Now, along with holding on to the good thoughts is letting go of the negative thoughts, not just letting them come in and sit there for a while, but just let them go. Just let them go. Honestly, by, by the age of 60, you know, we've had so, so many ups and downs in our lives that we do know how to deal with a, de a negative thought because we know from experience that nothing is gained by dwelling on that negativity. Nothing. We just know. It's, you just, I mean, don't even have to uh, justify yourself. You know from experience that letting it go is the best thing. And then you can leave a space for love, leave a space for the positive to come in. Yes, instead of no. Now, this is actually really interesting. I've been thinking a lot about this in terms of downsizing. And, you know, you think about minimize, minimizing your life, simplifying, and you think of saying, no, no, I don't want that anymore. I'm going to give that away. No, that doesn't fit me anymore. You know, no, I'm not interested in having that in my life anymore. And really what you're saying is yes, because in letting that go, you're leaving space for the yes. You're saying, yes, I do want this or I do want that you don't want the thing you're letting go so in in effect it's the same thing as Joan's saying is thinking yes instead of thinking no now staying present of course this is tough I know this is really tough to stay present and not worry about the future not regret about the past <laughs> it's just being right there in the moment and sometimes for me a cup of tea does that I don't know why but just having a cup of tea makes me feel like I'm there I'm right there, or even cooking something. It just puts me in the present, and that gives you power. It does, because when you think about wor uh, the future, worry about it, or you, th you regret things in the past, you're just zapping your energy, in my opinion. <laughs> so that's just my advice. Let it go. Um, be with happy people. Joan's got a, a great um, discussion here. I mean, it's really about not letting go of friendship just because it's not convenient right now or, you know, just not being being mean. But if there's people in your life that are toxic or, or you know, work situations or whatever, just let them go 
and surround yourself with joy, joyful people, people that love you, people that care about you. You know, and when they say, how are you feeling today? <laughs> well, actually listen and, uh, and care what you say. And those are the people, in my opinion, that we have to surround ourselves with. Now, of course, she talks about taking on positive pursuits like gym, going to the gym, eating healthy, all those things that we need uh, and can do in our control to make us feel more positive in the, to start the day. Yeah, it's easy to go the other way, but you know, it's, it's better for you if you can choose positive and go and do some exercise. Another thing that she recommends, and I think we're getting a little bit close to the end, there's a, a lot of good ideas here though, is to simply let, get off social media for one day or longer. Just say on Facebook, going away for a few days, folks, hope everybody has a wonderful week and just letting it go for a few days. Because that, if you eliminate just one social media outlet, you will feel more spacious. Trust me, I've, I've done this before. You know, being mindful is another way of looking at, um, you know, what's going on in your life and making sure that self-reflection gives you a sense of, um, oh, I don't know, just acceptance of, of what you what you have and what you and what you are dealing with. You know, just that being grateful and and respectful of the, of the mistakes you've made, the decisions you've made, and uh, and being mindful of what you do have, staying focused on that. No excuses, right? No excuses, no blame. Just take responsibility, own it, own what you, the decisions you've made. There's no such thing as luck in life. You know, you don't, you don't get luck just because, you know, it, you wish it. It happens because you work for it. And we know how that works, right? We do know how that works. And so I would say, you know, take responsibility for your mistakes. Okay, here you are. Not in a good situation, but, you know, own it and live it and move on and move on with positivity. I know, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm trying not to be like a Pollyanna about this, like everything's going to be just fine if you just let it go. I mean, I know that's not true at all. It's so hard and I'm really respectful of that. And lots of other things you can do, like listen to music and go for a walk or to go dancing. You know, all these things, if you start your day with those things, any of these ones that we've mentioned, I think have gone through almost the whole 20. But when you start your day that way, it's a positive start to, the, to your, your life. And every day is like a new day. You've got a blank slate. You can bring challenges with you and problems, or you can let them, let them go and, and start fresh. Hope that's been useful. I, I feel, as I sometimes talk about these things, I'm kind of preaching to the choir, like we actually do know this stuff. But as I hear myself saying it, I think, Hmm, I should have done that. Or I, I mean, I learned from it too. So um, if you found that useful, I, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, I would love you to leave a, co um, a comment. You know, I would really love to know what's the first thing that you normally think of when you wake up in the morning. Leave your comments in the section below. We'll have a, have a dialogue and uh, share and look out for people that are saying things that might need a hug. Let's make it a hugging day. <laughs> Just reach out and give virtual hugs and let us know what's usually the first thing that you think about first thing in the morning. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you again for being here from the bottom of my heart. I really do appreciate your support and being here and I look forward to the conversation and um, I look forward to seeing you all again really soon. Take good care. Bye-bye for now.